Alexa Accessibility Talks, a monthly virtual meetup where we chat about digital accessibility, inclusivity, and usability. Each month, we invite a speaker to present on a topic, and we invite the community to ask questions and participate in the discussion. I'm today's host, Heather New. I'm a senior production artist at Merge, and I have affinity for accessibility. First off, I want to remind everyone that our group seeks to provide a friendly, safe environment. All participants should be able to engage in productive dialogue. We want to share and learn with each other in an atmosphere of mutual respect. So we ask that all participants adhere to the Accessibility Code of Con Conduct. Accessibility Talks Code of Conduct. And this applies to all community interactions and events, including the verbal questions in the chat or the text channels. And the Code of Conduct can be found on our website at allytalks.com. That's A-1-1-Y-T-A-L-K-S.com. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the amount of hurt, cruelty, and injustice happening all over our world every day. There are too many issues to bring up or focus on just one, but we suggest you take some time to give generously to causes you're passionate about and be compassionate to each other and yourselves during these tough times. Today, I am thrilled to welcome our speaker, Aaron Esau. Esau, Aaron is an accessibility advocate and maker. He shares different inventions and creations on instructables. He also shares how he navigates a world that's lacking in accessibility on his YouTube channel, Plains Pirates. Today, Aaron will be presenting how to make and improve your own accessibility and adaptive devices and mods crash course. For this talk, we will have AI transcripts provided by Thyssen, and they're available courtesy of Canopy Studios. The link to the transcripts can be found in the YouTube chat. If you have any questions for Aaron throughout the presentation, um, post them to Twitter using the hashtag AllyTalks, A-1-1-Y-T-A-L-K-S, or in the chat window if you're participating in our live chat. So Aaron, we may have gotten a hint that you like bow ties from your event poster and you're wearing one now, but I hear you have a collection. So how many bow ties do you have and do you have room for more? I totally forgot to count because I figured you'd ask that. <laughs> uh, maybe a couple dozen? Dozen. And yeah. you know, there's always room for more. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, the floor is yours, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, I do. Um, I talk about accessibility in you know my YouTube. I just I just pick the camera up and set it up, and that's what I do for that. Um, there's so I'm upper limb different. I have one of these. <laughs> And uh, so much of my problems stem from just grasping things. So here, uh, I don't know. Should we just get into it? Let's get into it. All right. Let's see. Which that was this one. Hopefully this doesn't crash. Y'all still there? We're following. Keep... Okay, you can hear me. All right. There. So this is this is Instructables. It's an absolutely wonderful forum. Um, you know, you can if you need to learn how to. Do something, search here, and it's step step by step guides made by people ju just like you and me. Um, like I said, I've always been disabled. Uh, it's uh, do 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 do. Um, my my struggle is often just manipulating things. So um, this is you know this is not a fully encompassing how to do this um, because it, you know every situation is different. Um, but this is sort of more or less a generalized overview of what seems to work for me. Uh, you know, a pen and paper is always a great place to start. I've always got some in my pocket. Some measuring tools are good. And uh, remember, you're going to fail. <laughs> and, you know, just do it over and over. And eventually you'll figure it out. And failure gets lessened the more you do it. Um, so, well, a while back, I was trying... Yeah, 
I'm going to go over this one here, and then I'll show you some others that I've worked on over the years or recently. Um, uh, so I couldn't get into my son's medicine bottle to give him his meds in the morning. Well, I barely got into it. And uh, so the first step is, you know, what is the problem? So I made a little diagram here of, you know, you got your pill bottle and all the forces that are required to open the bottle. Uh, so, no, oh, we don't need to go through that. So, yeah, here's, now you just sort of got to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? What is, um, what, yeah, what, what, what is the problem? That, this is a relentlessly difficult thing to do, uh, to figure out. Um, how many times I've gone, gone down one path just to discover that, oh, the problem that I thought I had isn't the real problem, and it's something else. Uh, that's that's a real thing. Uh, it can happen often, and will happen often. Um, so you know, but you know, pill bottle is pretty straightforward. So um, you know, you need to you need to compress the lid and twist, twist the lid from the cap. Um, so ah, but we have kids, so it has to be kid resistant, kid resistant and accessible. How's that going to work? Oh, here we go. Um, so, you know, start just start writing down ideas. Anything. Bad ideas are great, too, you know? Uh, you know, I came up with, uh, let's see, lockable. Well, that that's secure, but it's going to be tricky um, to get all the parts together. You know, petition manufacturers to make kid-resistant and accessible bottles. Ah. Uh, there's probably some legal issues behind that. Uh, adding something to the bottle, that might might work well. Uh, and then, you know, a lockable pill container, well, there's some more complexity, and you might mess up your label doing that. Uh, we want we want to we want to keep it as keep it si keep it stupid simple. Um, is you know, simple things tend to work better. Um, and you have less of that learning curve to work with. So, you know, I decided because I can't mess up the labels and and all darn lost my thought. I <laughs> uh, can't mess up the labels on this project. So I wanted to come up with some things that, you know, just around like so I dug through, you know, the junk on my workbench down here and I found some rubber bands and zip ties and then I you know I got to thinking about the you know jars in the shop screwed to the underside of a shelf so that's a good one they made an instructable for that one too uh, but you know you got to think about you know what's your pros and your cons of each of these things and uh, and then, you know I've got a 3d printer in my basement and I'm very good with CAD so course that's in there and you know that one's real handy because it's shareable but you have to have a 3d printer uh all right so we're gonna go down a little bit so this is one of my first tests here we can click on the picture come on there it goes so yeah you know i just attached a rubber band to the lid and that actually it, it gave a lot a lot of purchase on the lid in my hand and then I added them to both and that was eh, that wasn't significantly better uh, the zip tie just slipped on the lid it was useless uh, and this is the first prototype and it's very very specific to this style bottle where is that style bottle ah. It's very specific to that, and it worked fairly. It was, you know, it worked the best out of all of them against my leg. All right, yeah, and measure, measure, and measure, and then be sure you're punching it into the computer the right way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got, and then you know, write down your results of all your tests. You know, your bands worked pretty good. Zip tie didn't work at all. 3D printed handle worked well. 
uh, it, it is a little clumsy. Um, so, you know, and then use what worked uh, for you. You know, rubber bands, like, yeah. Well, I've, I've since taken the rubber bands off of the pill bottles in our cabinet because I, well, iteration happened. Um, but that they were on there for a long while. All right, let's go down here. Okay, so this is this is one of those iterative processes. I made a cap, designed a cap. You know, I, I went with the three D wrap, three D printer up because I can. It's convenient for me. Uh, that worked well, but then I was asked by a number of people, "Can you make them for these lids?" And that got nuts. I mean, look at all those things. You know, I went around to all the local pharmacies and and uh, the little family owned ones were they they'd throw bottles at you. <laughs> but the uh, the big ones uh, always pulling teeth I ended up getting them from friends. Um, so. Yeah, and, you know, just you just iterate and iterate and iterate. Uh, let's see. Oh, the, see, that's all my many iterations here. This is the one that's got a little uh, pop-out foil cutter. The foil cutter was uh, the Reddit com community suggested a foil cutter. Um, or was it Jen? I don't remember. Jen's my other half. And uh, here's here's a version that has it on there. And there's a, a little lip for popping pop tops as well. Um, so, yeah, you just got to think about, think about what your problem is and then you know, one little step at a time, and you'll get there eventually. Let's see. Yeah, oh, yeah, there we are at the end. Okay, so now go back to that link. Come on. Uh, not this again. Stream, StreamYard is sharing your screen. Okay, we'll stop sharing screen. Oh no. You're okay. Um, I think you stopped sharing your camera. If we could figure oh, that out, that would be sharing cool. my camera. Oh. I'd love to see your face. I'm gonna add hey. there you are. <laughs> I'm gonna add Heather back in to this. All right. But now you disappeared again. Oh no. No. Um, I'm adding Heather back. There we go. <laughs> I'll step back. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Ah, Hey, Click right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, what what is this? Stay. Okay. Maybe if I hit the control E. Yeah. No. What's going on? Looks like the camera was unplugged. It was attached to my computer. It is not unplugged. Click the camera button to turn it back on. Yeah. The light's going. You're back. Hey. All right. Let's see if it stays this time. Nope. What's going on here? Okay, attacking today. Thanks for your patience, everyone. <laughs> okay. Is that working? Yes. Yeah. Seems like it's holding. Okay. Maybe it's when you leave that screen. I won't touch the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can follow uh, this link here. Let's see okay uh where was where <laughs> where are we at um yeah uh so you know just you gotta you gotta figure out what your problem is that's always the biggest challenge is just to find the problem like for a long time well i've been working on a prosthetic for myself for ye years and well i keep finding other solutions um uh you know most of the time like okay 
Yeah. I've seen a number of different devices that you've um, created to help out with accessibility, yeah. basically allow you to maneuver them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so, well, when I was at the lab at Wichita State University, um, I called it the arm lab. I don't remember. It's some biomedical lab. Um, working on this, uh, we, uh, well, one day, you know, I saw the janitor in the hall moving the broom, pushing the broom around, and I noticed one of his hands was stationary, and the other one was doing all the work. And in that, you know, so then, you know, the thing that I was working on, I, you know, I, I just saw that, and then I started thinking about that, and everything that I had worked on, got, I just threw out the window, because it was oh, there's a simpler solution. <laughs> you know, just make something that can hold something. And, you know, like, you know, working on that principle, you know, I came up with this. You know, it's just a hook like you would see on a, a, a crutch, essentially. And you know, this is my broom. Because brooms are wonderful examples because everyone needs to use a broom. And, you know, it just sits in my forearm here. And it holds it so I can mani manipulate the broom without putting all the strain on my wrist. And, you know, this works for, you know, like a, a hoe in the garden or, you know, I haven't tried it with a shovel yet. I don't think that maneuvering is quite right, but it works well. And you can't see any of that. I'm still going to do that. Part of the grit. Um, so, yeah, you need to... Yeah, just think about, you know, what, what is the problem that you're trying to solve and, you know, work, you know, just work one little piece at a time. Yeah, it seems uh, like you go through a very similar process, kind of like the scientific method to where you find, yeah. so, find a problem, mm -hmm. then you hypothesize different outcomes, then you yep. go through and then test what you think worked. Then oh, yeah. I iterate, I iterate, I iterate. Uh -huh. <laughs> Two sides, <Yeah. laughs> just like this pill bottle that you were showing. Yeah, um, yeah. So there was quite a variety of pill bottles here. Um, uh -huh. did, you, did you ever stop? <laughs> You're still going with different pill bottles. <laughs> um, well, I you know I haven't found any more pill bottles. Those are all the local ones. So stool back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are all the local ones, so I don't need to worry too hard about it anymore. That's the right way. Um, and yeah, it, it, it handles all the local bottles, and which should be most of the bottles out there. I could be horribly, horribly wrong. You know, I don't know what the bottles up in Canada or Mexico or Europe look like. Yeah, and if People, if you if viewers aren't aware, Instructables is a site. It's kind of like open source, right, Aaron? Yeah, yeah, very open source. And, and you can post your projects. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will provide blueprints or plans yep. To, yep. to keep them and yep. carry them out yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the files, well, there's links to the files on the Instructables. And, and then, you know, that's, you know, I keep uh, fangs.com. And I just got... On the Colts, eh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> or Colts 3D, um, yeah. Uh, then there's, um, yeah, um, yeah. Iteration is, you know, I don't know how many times I build a thing just to build it again, with you know, just something moved, you know, some pin or some little thing move just a, a fraction of an inch or you know just to make it a little bit better well yeah here this is you know this is one of the final designs of that you know it has three holes and then this foil cutter here on the side you know it's retractable which is great but you know that's a two-piece print and then here's the current one uh, light's too strong <laughs> uh but and you know and it's got the the foil cutters are 
Can you see them? There, oh, there it is. Recessed. You know, the, the first foil cutter on there. Oh, I'll bet it's probably in the recycling bin. Um, uh, was, uh, it was just, it was just on the surface. And, well, the first time I went to open a bottle next to it, I took a chunk out of my thumb. So, that can't be there. <laughs> so, yeah, I just had to find a way to get the foil cutter still functional, but out of the way. And, yeah, it was just lots of... Do you have more stuff. plans for the, the pill bottle iterations, or you have it in a good place where... Uh, I mean, I, until I'm told otherwise, it's in a pretty good place. You know, spent a number of months working on that, and yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to move on. I get you. So you have some other projects here on Instructables. We have this yeah. steering wheel puller from a junk hinge, some quick and dirty 3D printer enclosures. Are the are there other pieces in here that you would like to tell us more about? Uh, Let's see, there's, um, I made a, ooh, is it, oh, hey, it's right here. Hang on. I made, so my brother teaches um, aerospace at North Carolina A&T. So he, when he, whenever he comes back, we like to fly model airplanes. Well, he flies them, I crash them. <laughs> uh, so... In an effort to make more flying and less crashing, you know, we took one of these here controllers, cheapo depot job, and then, oh gosh. Come on. A type of mess. There's what kind of, I don't remember what exactly, it's an Instructables down there in its YouTube video, but, you know, we made a handle that handles. You know the um, uh, the elevator and the ailerons, or you know, or rudder, depending on what. And then your throttle here, and that's almost all the airplane you need. Oh, and then a button for a parachute, which I've kept trying to make and always backfires horribly. <laughs> so I have to rebuild the plane, anyways. <laughs> I'm going to. Open up that Instructables link here. Yeah. Oh, I should have kept sharing my screen. Oh. Yeah, see if you can share it while okay. still maintaining your video. Uh-huh. The permissions. Let's see, share while maintaining my video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Window? Is that it? Oh, that that'd probably work. No. No, oh, gosh, I don't know. Share. Oh. I don't know. Can you see my video? Yep, I can see it. Okay. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I had to open this covertly because when you open it and it's your own thing. It keeps wanting you to edit. Hey, come on, go. There we go. Yeah, so we, you know, we just ended up tearing the back of this thing open. Oh. Okay, yeah, see? You know, and you just use the junk that's laying around. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty common theme. And, you know, I found most disabled people are really good at this and intuitive at about you know, just making adaptations. I hear, you know, I use some foam board and I just stuck the various things in there trying to figure out what's going to work. And there's lots of soldering. Hol holding the solder, the wires down with the wrench so it's easy. You know, so, so you can solder it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my brother did all the all the inside <laughs> inside of the controller. That was a that's a bit beyond my soldering skill. Um, yeah, you could you know you can see the video on the YouTube. Okay, so 
huh? Yeah. Oh, there's the video again. Let's see. Okay, is this the one I want? Is this it? Oh, look at that. Okay, we're going to close out of this. Oh, unless you wanted to see something else on there. Whatever you'd like to present next. Um, well, Let's see. We have, I don't, uh, there's more instructables on here that I'm seeing uh, this pizza cutter. Like it doesn't seem like it, it very, or it varies throughout your life. Like it's not just in the workshop. It's not just in the yard. Right? You know? It's everywhere. Yeah. So you're uh -huh. making things for pizza cutters, pill bottles, remaking remote controllers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is there anything you haven't adjusted or <laughs> had to adapt? <laughs> uh, no, not really. There's, yeah, no. Um, we've, I've had to fix just about everything. Okay, how do I? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I've had to modify everything <laughs> at some point or another. Can I just stop? Can I just close that? Hey, all right. Didn't crash it this time. Uh, yeah, you know, like my car, I, you know, I've, I've got uh, spinal fusion in my back and, and I've broken the rods. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, sitting. Well, I've learned at physical therapy that it's a lot about posture. <laughs> but in the process of things, it was, you know, to drive to school and back you know, an hour every day was, you know, I was too much. So I ended up getting a racing seat for my car from a $200 car. I got a, you know, $1,200 seat, <laughs> you know, just so I could, you know, make it to school and still function. And then you're still doing more with steering wheel or wheel puller from. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, I don't remember what went wrong, but I had to take the wheel off of our pickup. Uh, oh, I think something with the blinker, like it was stuck permanently blinking. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I had to take the wheel off. And I know we have a steering wheel puller. I just couldn't find it. So I took 20 minutes. Actually, it took like an hour because I had to stop and take pictures all the time. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's just, you know, find a problem, find a way to solve, uh, you know, break it down into as small a chunks as possible. So I'm going to say, and, and I like to build things from time to time. What are some things that you wish that designers considered more for accessibility? Uh, everything. <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's uh you know you walk up to a door and well there's this big old bar and you so you press on it and oh that's the hinge side i mean that's 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 just a pain you know when you got an arm full of stuff <laughs> and yeah um yeah they're the disabled people were we're we're a quarter of the population, but we are not considered in the design of almost anything. Um, so, you know, I don't know how, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to get out there and yell at the world, but yeah, I really don't know how. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate to grow up on the farm and, you know, one of the stories I tell often is one day my great uncle picked me up. I was probably six or seven, you know, just, just old enough to see, see over the dash of the tractor, he picked me up, threw me up there. And it, you know, I had a 20 foot disc behind it. And he said, I'll see you in three hours at Coal Creek and we'll go get lunch, <laughs> you know, and that, that had a six speed on the left side and then three up here by the wheel. And it was my job to get there. there. There was no question as to whether or not I could do it. 
It was just get it done. And yeah, that's, you know, this is just sort of the farming life is just get it done. Yep. Be resourceful. Yep. Yep. yeah that process that you use like i really like that the way that you approach it on instructables and you know have it it's very thought out mm -hmm. um i think you're very clever in finding problems and solutions and like you're you know you're obviously you're experiencing them in your daily life and, and how you can change things um and then even trying to get them out there i think presenting in in uh, things like this for accessibility to get that information yeah. out there is really important. It's a great place to start, but oh yeah, it does seem me. some efforts being made, but maybe you know not fast enough and too yeah. late. Yeah. So yeah, pushing for what mm -hmm. one of our friends Merrill always says is you know, progress over perfection. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the fence puller we got on the back of the H. It's uh. Dirty welds and baling wire. And what does Welding. that allow you to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what? What does that allow you to do? Uh, well, we're uh, we're rebuilding our our fence around our farm, so it'll hold cattle again. And because uh, it wasn't before. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it, it lets it lets you know me sit on the tractor with a spool of wire. Let's see, right right over this shoulder behind me. And then I can drive along the fence posts and then somebody can come behind and put a tie on each fence post. So it takes two people to do that job that took three or four before. And, you know. That sounds like a thing that everybody would benefit from. <laughs> well, they would. And, and they do. They do build them commercially, but, you know. <laughs> sure. So you found your way of making your own. So you yeah. and another person can put mm -hmm. up a fence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's minimal, minimal, uh, minimal people in the field and gets the job done well enough. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just. And that reminds me of another YouTube video of yours I saw, which was, uh, I think you were starting a tractor. Oh, yeah pretty uncommon to be able to do without both limbs oh i don't know you know i'm, I'm not sure it's it's uh i guess i've i've i'm i will i'm the only one i've seen do it one-handed <laughs> <laughs> there uh but it's the only way i know how to do it okay yeah. uh, you know yeah and the the other end is of that tractor is the one with the uh fence puller on it <laughs> right now <laughs> Hey, everybody. Hi. Uh, you guys are doing great. We have some questions that I can put up on the screen. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and duck back and put some questions up. And Heather, go ahead and take it away from there. OK? okay. Sounds great. Cool. What advice would you give others who are interested in creating adaptive devices? Uh, be prepared to fail a lot. <laughs> But the more you do it, the better you'll get. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, it just trying to figure out what the problem is, and then reducing that down into its tiniest part, uh, you know, as small a piece as you can. Um, that'll, you know, the, the further you can break a project down, the simpler it gets. Um, so once you're able to do that, uh, it starts to get quite doable. Okay. What's the next question we have? Are there any major companies you've noticed putting accessibility first? Uh, major ones? I'm not sure. Um, uh, you know, with the, you know, this is a mostly digital 
accessibility platform. Uh, so in the digital space, there's a lot going on. Um, like, yeah, just a lot of stuff, but I, I live in the physical world, so, um, I haven't seen too terrible many things, at least that weren't marked up beyond my reach. Um, there's that disability tax thing, <laughs> which is why I try to make everything, all of my projects open source as, as, as open source as possible. Nancy, what other, other questions we have coming in? You have a background in engineering and or mechanics? Uh, well, I grew up a farmer, so yes. And then I did, uh, I did, um, I got my machinist certificate right out of high school and just in time for a recession. And then I um, graduated Wichita State University with a bachelor's in civil engineering technology right in time for a pandemic. <laughs> so yeah, um, I kept getting told, ah, I wish you would uh, reapply when you have got an engineering piece of paper. So I finally got that and eh, they're still not interested, but yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Have you ever used a 3D printer? I do. I pulled some parts off of it yesterday. It's over there. <laughs> Is that what you used for some of the 3D printer or some of the uh, pill bottle opener? Yeah, yeah. Those these are all these are all 3D printed. Hey, uh, we don't have any other questions, but there was a comment um, from Andrew McPherson. He says the bottle caps on this video are different from the ones I see in the UK. He said his uh, bottle caps don't have notches you could grab onto. So that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are, well, let's see here. Uh, this, is, this is the one that Walmart and Walgreens use. And, you know, they've just got you know, the little textured rim here. Um, this is a, a real challenge because of this thing here. You, know, you have to hold that down and then twist it. Um, so I designed it to grab this top edge here. So if if it, uh, yeah, it, it might be able to grab them. I don't know what UK bottles are. I'd love to see pictures of them uh, or get my hands on some. That would be fascinating. Uh, I think we were just talking about that. <laughs> um, present you some different problems to solve if there's yeah, challenges. Yeah. <laughs> Make a Europe version. Yeah. It, you know, I tried to make it as uh, available as possible. So it's got, they've got, um, they're taper, tapered. So it works like a wedge. So this can accept many different sizes of roundness and these the little teeth in here are just to help um increase the force and the grip do pickle jars also fit in there <laughs> uh, <laughs> no that's a different challenge <laughs> all right we have another great question here um heather go ahead and take it away have you ever heard from folks who have used your instructables uh, they had success stories, and do you get any feedback that you use to make improvements? Uh, you know what? Here, I got a... So when I posted the that first... One of the first um, iterations of the pill bottle holder... Where's my camera? Screenshots. Uh, on and You know, I shared it with Reddit because it's a wonderful community. You know, I shared it with the disability forums and the 3D printing forums. And then, uh, so one one person, you know, the next day, I downloaded and printed this straight away, perfect print, and brought my partner to tears, being able to open those pesky pill bottles on her own. Bless you for caring and sharing. It's truly amazing how simple acts of kindness make an enormous impact. 
So yeah, that's that's that one. And I found there's a lot of people that search instructables and use things off of there that then don't don't comment back or anything like that. I do that too. <laughs> so yeah, I mean there's yeah, everything you put out in the world for the people to see, people will see it. Now you may not know people are seeing it. And it may even be, you know, hidden by the algorithm on purpose. Or by accident. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, every time you put something out there, you always got to put it out there hoping somebody can use it. It looks like there have been close to a thousand views on your, um, on the pill bottle post from instructor. Yeah. So it gives a little bit of information, but yeah, if they're not directly interacting with you, then your information yeah. is a little limited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got another question. Are you going to create a patent for your inventions? I get I get told to patent these things every day, all day long. Um, patents cost money, and then it costs even more money to maintain them. I can't do that. You know, maybe if somebody could get behind me and help, that'd be a different story, but... There's just no way I can feasibly do it now. And, you know, if you patent things, then there's that um, built-in drive to profit from that patent. And, well, that's not helping the world. Profits don't help people. Profits help, well, profits help a very, very small amount of people. Uh, well, it sounds like it's when they get just sponsored. Sponsor for Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Keep waiting for some of the tool companies to send me messages, but they never do. <laughs> okay. I've got a few more questions here. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll throw those in the channel, Heather. I wasn't sure if you were following. I see that you have a DIY for a prosthetic. Is that because of the cost? Um, well, yeah. I So, yeah, I started that. You know, my goal is to have a, uh, a very functional, not pretty in any way. Um, you know, ah, it was in my bag, and now it's on my desk. Uh, so this is the end off of it. Um, and yeah, yeah, the goal is to make this as cheap as possible. Um, like, well, the one that's in the picture with all the PVC, this is just part of it. Um, on destructibles, uh, you know, it might, it, it probably costs less than $100 to print and all the parts. Actually, I know it costs less than $100 to print and all the parts. Um, but then I ran into the problem of how to attach it to my body. So, you know what? I'm going to get that done for next month. Is I'm going to make uh, a body double, you know, foam mannequin of myself so I can build a amount on that. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's the project sort of died trying to attach it to my body. <laughs> I had my body 3D scanned, but then I forgot to shave my chest, so all the hair was giving <laughs> two and three images, and <laughs> oh wow, I couldn't sort any of them out. <laughs> Try building prosthetics. Oh, question. Have you ever tried building prosthetics or early designs with Lego? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I did as a kid. Uh, I, that was probably 20 years ago long before pictures were easy. My dad might have some pictures. <laughs> there you go. Well, it does seem like PVC is kind of like adult Legos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I've, just, I've just upgraded to different Legos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. 
Do you have any advice for someone who wants to start inventing things or educational opportunities? Uh, so, well, inventing things, I don't know. No, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, inventing things, just get out to the shop. You know, just go get your hands dirty, make something happen. Um, educational opportunities. So Wichita State University, they um, actually started a uh, adaptive technology and accessible devices. Maybe it's the other way around um, program. Uh, so you can go learn, you know, it's a, uh, it's a combination between in the engineering school and the biomedical school. So you could go, um, you know, study there and take the classes. And I think it finalizes with a, you might even get a certificate for it. I'm not sure exactly. It's a, you know, it's a certificate path. Um, there are a few others, but that's, you know, that's the one I talk with um, Samantha Cochran. She's running that right now um, on a sort of regular basis. And they helped me with a vegetable peeler, which I've totally lost the video for. So. Oh, darn. Hey, <laughs> okay, we've got another question. Have you thought about teaching classes to kids on simple inventions? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. For a while, I was thinking about that. You know, still, still am. Um, again, I have no idea where to start with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know where to start. I mean, I guess the YouTube. I gotta get more organized. And I'd be happy to. If anybody knew any ways to help or improve that. You know, maybe that would be the, the trick to having more accessibility. We get them get the mm -hmm. group in and understanding of what it takes to um, you know, design and think in that manner to where you can yeah. see problems to solve and consider a wider range of people, um, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and think about, you know, even like, I, like I mentioned before, accessibility is good for everybody. So, you know, a thing that you can may have required two hands before, if you can do it with one hand, then, you know, that anybody with one hand would benefit from it, or even just someone who has something else in their other hand, you know, it, it feels like there's a lot of missed opportunity here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have, so, I carry, I carry a pliers. This is also the purse hook, the the uh, uh, grocery bag hook. You know, just hang anything off of it. You know, if I need a free hand, but it's full of something that's got that I can hang on there. Well, there you go. You just that's just a simple thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely could be applied to a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have one final question. Let's see. All right. What do your kids think of your inventions? Oh, they're my uh, destructive testing specialists. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if a you know a six and four year old or well younger than you know five and three year old can't break it, then nobody can. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't yeah. like a good test subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they uh. They like to play with the, the leftovers and, you know, see what I'm doing. Kids are perfect testers for device durability. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, do you have any final words on accessibility? Uh, let's see. Maybe well, a call for people to consider it more or? Yeah. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, I started rebuilding a friend's walker. Walker? Or is it a stroller? It's a walker. Walker? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, it, it broke. And the parts were too expensive, you know, to get it professionally done. So I'm doing it. Uh, you know, I'm improvising. It's got brake, bicycle brakes now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I, I quickly realized how simple things like that are to work on. You know, the, the bearings and the wheels are skateboard bearings, except they're not serviceable. So, you know, I did my best to clean all the junk out, but, you know, order some skateboard bearings for half the price of the medical medical bearings. And, 
you know, th these are these are a lot of these mobility and accessibility things are fairly simple and straightforward. Um, so, you know, I would encourage, you know, every maker site, bike shop, whatever to, you know, repair these things, help people out. Uh, you know, most of the time you don't, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it, it does need to be, you know, accessibility should be a human right, but it's not. And that's, um, unfortunate because there are more of more disabled people than there are the kind of people that are running the country and our businesses. There are more of us than there are of any of them. So why can't we, you know, stand up and do something? Get it done. Very well said. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap. You know, we love that you share what you build. Um, thanks so much for detailing your solutions and having that Instructables open source uh -huh. projects. Um, it's great. I hope you can keep doing that. Um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing your experience. It's been a pleasure. The links yeah. that we mentioned today during the talk will be available when we post this on YouTube online. Mm -hmm. Um, we're always looking for new speakers, and we make a conscious effort to include marginalized group in our um, tech, in our speaker lineup. So let us know if you have any ideas um, how to make Ally Talks more accessible, friendly, inclusive to all. Um, be sure to join us next month, and we'll talk more things accessibility. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Accessibility Talks, to never miss a talk. And that's youtube.com slash C slash accessibility talks. And you can also follow us on Twitter at A11YTALKS. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day. All right. Thank you. <laughs>